everyone, Nick here. Hope you guys are doing well. And of all the deep philosophical questions that plague us, perhaps the most prominent is that of trying to understand our place in the universe. We often find ourselves looking up at the stars and asking some seemingly unanswerable questions like, are we alone? What else is out there? And even who else is out there? These interstellar quandaries have served as the basis for many of our undertakings in space, and they continue to fuel one of our biggest ambitions yet, finding extraterrestrial life. Clearly, NASA serves as the prime agent for such exploratory efforts, and they've since unveiled an expansive list of over 1,000 exoplanets that they believe could harbor life, and more are being added on a daily basis. Now, specifically, I want to focus on the actual process of trying to figure out if a planet contains life or not. I think this is something that we often take for granted, and sure, we see the concept explored in news and media constantly, but we never actually discuss the techniques and strategies used by scientists to figure this stuff out. So, naturally, let's check it out. Following what NASA called a gold rush of exoplanet discovery, we now find ourselves asking the most important question of all. Which of those already discovered planets are the most optimal candidates for life? Interestingly, and as a clarification, scientists can never actually fully determine this. If you want to know if a planet is truly habitable, doing so requires direct observation, and even the best telescopes and optical measures ever devised are still not capable enough to afford such needs. So scientists have to rely on tools already at their disposal and knowledge of stellar processes. And our first stop and their first strategy used is through plain old pictures. And I know it sounds boring, but they turn out to be really effective. Now you may think just taking a picture of Earth is a waste of time. Time. After all, trying to determine if life exists from a collection of pixels in space seems a little bizarre. However, scientists have actually had a lot of success using the technique, and they hope to apply similar principles for worlds beyond our own. Using NASA's polychromatic imaging camera, researchers at UC Riverside were able to snap high-resolution images of Earth and then scale them down to a 3x3 set of pixels. By taking images every hour and examining how the pixels change, scientists were able to figure out whether the camera is looking at mostly land or mostly water, and even track advanced metrics like seasonal variation, incident light, and rotation rate. All of these quantities are ones that directly influence Earth's potential for life, and scientists are hoping to do the exact same thing for worlds beyond our own. Now, before we discuss the second strategy, let's talk about a few things first. In addition to being able to understand what makes a planet habitable, it's also really important to be able to quickly cross off a planet if you know it violates a certain set of criteria. And scientists do this by quickly identifying the Venus zone of several star systems. Well, now what's this whole mention of Venus? Well, for one, Earth and Venus are very similar in terms of shape and size, but where they differ is surface temperature and atmospheric pressure. Venus boasts a surface temperature of nearly 900 degrees Fahrenheit with a pressure reading that's 90 times that of Earth. And as a result, you can see how Venus is made out to be this unlivable hellhole that serves as the perfect counterpart to Earth, which is this cradle of life. Scientists can then use this comparison and go to any star system and apply a method known as planetary insulation, which basically tracks how much light a planet receives from its host star to figure out an area of space that is clearly marked as uninhabitable. As a result, it helps them narrow down their search results, which as you can imagine are very, very vast, and it makes the process of finding a planet that does contain life that much easier. The final, and in my opinion, most exciting strategy used by scientists is in mapping the stellar planetary processes that permit and govern life in space. For example, let's look at Earth's magnetic field, which shields and protects us from harmful solar winds and debris. First things first, a world sun needs to do a couple of things. First, the host star needs to be able to produce enough radiation and heat to sustain life, but also show restraint in storm and solar activity such that it doesn't damage a planet's atmosphere and preclude the possibility for liquid water and life. 
Scientists then take this really great relationship between Earth and our sun and see if similar behavior exists in other star systems as well. Scientists can then map the amount of radiation produced by a host star and see how it would affect the atmospheres of all of the orbiting exoplanets. If it turns out to be too invasive, then chances are that exoplanet could not sustain life. Moreover, we can also make computer generated models of Earth, put it into the same star system, and then see how a known habitable planet would survive. The result would tell us an incredible amount about what it takes to be able to have a habitable and livable planet in a totally different star system. Ultimately, such strategies underscore a very committed effort to finding extraterrestrial life, and whether or not they turn out to be effective, we should nonetheless pay our respects. We still find so many parts of our own world inexplicable, and yet we have mounted this amazing effort to try and divulge the mysteries of other ones, and I think it comprises one of humanity's greatest undertakings. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for making it this far. Click my links down below to read my Huffington Post articles and follow me on social media when you can. Thanks, guys.